Hi, this is Bruce coming at you from Groxio Learning with a couple of firsts. The first is that this is the first installment for Programmer Passport, the Prologue Edition. And the second is that this is the first language that we're going to do in the Joe Armstrong Tribute. It's a pretty good story, so settle in. I was in my living room when I got a tweet that rocked me to the core. Joe Armstrong had passed. It was a tweet that was sent by Francesco, who manages a lot of the conferences in the Erlang community. And a lot of us just didn't know what to do. And I think from my perspective, without Joe Armstrong, there's no seven languages in seven weeks and there's no programmer passport. I'd like to tell a little bit of that story now. Programmer Passport, the series, as you know it, is based on the book Seven Languages in Seven Weeks. And in many ways, I was unprepared to write that book. So one of the most interesting moments for me was when my publisher came to me with a letter. I'd written three chapters, one in a language I know well called Ruby. And I'd written the prologue chapter and I'd written the Erlang chapter. And my publisher in her infinite wisdom said, we need to get some additional opinions on this pretty early in the manuscript. And she decided to send it to Joe, who I'd never met before, who I'd only heard of briefly. And the publisher got back this, this beautiful email. Well, no, actually it was a pretty direct email. And it said, I get the sense that this programmer understands Erlang very well. And I also get the sense that this programmer doesn't understand Prolog at all. So I basically packed up my pride, got on the phone and gave Joe a call. And this was a strange conversation to me or a strange e-conversation anyway, because, well, it seemed that Joe had a big investment in Prolog that I really didn't understand. You see, to me, Prolog was this academic language that you have to suffer through in college. But to Joe, it was something more. You see, it was one of Joe's favorite languages, and it eventually actually formed the foundation of Erlang. The first compiler in Erlang was written in Prolog. So I didn't understand at the time the toes that I was stepping on. And as I got more into it and I talked to Joe, he told me that I wasn't teaching the concepts in quite the right way. I wasn't capturing the fascination of Prolog that was so near and dear to him, but that I really didn't get myself. So one of the first things that we did was called the map coloring problem. And I will never forget this moment in my life. See, I was talking to Joe and I was struggling with the concepts. And I was trying to think through the algorithm of how Bruce would solve this map coloring program. And Joe said, that's the wrong approach. You just need to give it the rules. Give it the rules, Bruce. And I didn't get it. I didn't understand. And then at some point, I pressed enter and Prolog started rattling off answers. <laughs> and I laughed. And though Joe had probably taught this problem dozens, maybe hundreds of times, he was on the other end of the line laughing, just laughing. So here's the map coloring program. And you won't really get to this until the second installment of Prolog, but I kind of wanted to give you a taste of, of what I was going through at the time. You see, in Prolog, you don't sell the algorithm you basically write the rules of the game that you're trying to solve. And so here in this program, we say, this is what it means to be a border. These are the borders between the states. They all need to be different. And bam, you're done. And then you get answers that look like this and this. So we've computed the map coloring for um, and there's, there's a theorem to this nature, but we've computed the map coloring for South America with very little effort without even thinking about the way that we were trying to solve the problem. So another example is from seven languages in seven weeks and from the second edition, the, the second prologue edition. This is solving a Sudoku. And what I love about this one is that it beautifully captures the idea that in prologue, you're specifying a domain, hey, these are numbers from one to four. You can make it one to nine if you wanted to, if you wanted to expand it to a bigger one. And all of the rows are different. 
all of the columns are different and all of the squares are different. And that's it. That's the program. If you can describe the solution, Prolog can work out the rest. So this video is already getting pretty long and it doesn't seem right to wrap this up in the usual way. So I wanna take on a potential criticism head on. You might be wondering why I feel okay putting this kind of face on a commercial product. And the reason is that Joe valued this tremendously. I wanna tell you a little bit of a story about me this year going to India to give a talk. And I was feeling down, a little bit sick, and I needed some inspiration. And I wanted to basically help people understand why it's so critical to learn programming languages. So I was looking for a quote and I ran across this one and it knocked me out of my chair. You see, this quote was written by Joe Armstrong. And this quote was written as the forward or part of the forward to seven languages in seven weeks. I sure hope that you have as much fun reading it, watching the videos, participating as I did during my first prologue moment. <laughs>